All right, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, if you go on YouTube, you're going to be able to find your welding videos, your whatever welder videos, anything that you need to know about actually physically welding, you can find it on YouTube. What I'm going to do today is a little bit different. You see this little frame behind me? It's, it's just a small project I'm working on. This is about a third of it. It's, it's about a five foot long frame. There's another one going behind it. I'm going to show you how to make the back face. What I'm going to show you today how to do is something called welding fitting. Something that's not very shown very often. It's how do you get everything square easily and how do you actually tack something together so that when you're welding it, it doesn't warp one way or the other, and which way does it warp when you're actually welding it. So the stuff that most people don't talk about, because yeah, you weld a practice plate, it'll warp in towards your weld, that's given. Now, what if, what if you want to make this frame perfectly square like I just did here? Well, that's a little bit trickier, especially if you don't have anything like fancy or a jig or something very right made. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. First off, I'll show you that I can know how to weld, which if you see this frame, clearly I do. But anyways, I'll show you a quick feed here. Okay, so what we're gonna start with here is fairly basic. We're gonna make the outer frame. So in this case, what we're actually building is it's essentially a storage rack for propane cylinders. It's not actually propane cylinders, it's refrigerant cylinders, but I'm not sure everybody knows what a refrigerant cylinder is. They're essentially propane cylinders. Um, <clears throat> what we're gonna start with is you always wanna start off with the most amount of welding, the one that needs to be the squarest. You start off with faces first. So in this case, we're starting off with the front face and the back face, because the front face and the back face have the most parts on it that need to be actually physically welded. So what we're gonna do is once the front face and the back face are complete, then we only have to put the four link bars, because we're making basically a rectangular rack that uh, sits with a we'll front face and a back face, and then we connect them both, the, both together with only four bars. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the back. This, right now we're doing the back one. That one I showed you before, that was the front one. So what are we going to do to actually physically make it square? Um, this is fairly simple, fairly straightforward. What you want to do is you want to lay out all your parts. So in this case, we have uh, four pieces. So we have our two longer ends here, and then we have two shorter ends. So this is my other short end. It goes up front here. I don't think you can see it in the camera shot, but it's there. All right, what am I going to do here right away? What I'm going to do here right away is I am going to tack all four corners on the outside. And I'll tell you why I'm gonna tack them on the outside edges of the corner. Because what happens is wherever you tack or wherever you weld, the heat is gonna warp it. And it's essentially gonna to warp towards the weld. So if you weld two parts like this in an L shape and you weld this seam right here, it's gonna to wanna to warp like this. If you weld it on the outside, it's gonna to wanna to warp out. So we're gonna warp, we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna tack on all four corners on the outside. So it means they're all trying to warp away from each other. Never trust the welder square. Welder squares are never actually square. I got my welder square here. Make sure my edges are flush. I'm gonna place my first tack right here. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing on this corner. Well, it's square, we'll throw a quick tack here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this edge here. Well, it's square, make sure all my corners are flush. So, we have all the corners tacked. Now what are we gonna do? We have our welder squared, we got roughly squared-ish, all of our uh, components that we're trying to work with. So, what do we do now? Um, I'll tell you one thing we're not gonna do, we're not gonna use a square to try to square this uh, frame out because it's too big. Use a measuring tape. Now, how do you do a measuring tape square? This is fairly straightforward. What you do is you place the measuring tape on one corner and you measure to the far corner. So make sure to measure on the same point. So in this case, we got 65 uh, hair over a quarter, so I'd say 5 16 65 and 5 16 from that corner. Roughly in the middle of that corner, we measure the same side of the tape. So in this case, we got 65 and 5 16 essentially the exact same measurement. What that's gonna do is that tells us that this thing is perfectly square. So what I'm gonna do now is assuming all of my uh, parts here are fairly close to flush, Oh, looks like we're having some technical difficulties here. Somehow, 
some way it's still square. Now, next part is we're going to finish up our tacking. I'm going to attack these two corners first because these corners are going to try to warp in to each other. So if we tack them together, they're going to cancel out the warp and they're not going to go anywhere. So, tack here. Tack here. You know, a lot of people will tell you don't even worry about warpage with tacks, but with this kind of frame, you're going to have to worry about warpage with tacks because tacks still pull. And I did the same thing on the other side. So, now what I'm going to do, it's all completely tacked. It's all held together. So I'm going to weld up the seams. And I'm going to weld up the seams in a very methodical sort of way. Let me show you. Okay, the way I'm welding up the seams is fairly methodical. What I'm going to be doing is I'm always going to be welding opposing seams. Not opposing corner seams, but opposing side seams. Because I weld here, it's going to pull there. I weld here, it's going to pull here. So it's always going to want to try to pull where I'm welding. I don't like this. All right, here we go again. Try it again. No, this is the part you got to really make sure that you got everything 100%. Because if you don't have it 100% here, it's not going to work out for you later. I just looked at the part here, and it just wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. So now it is where I want it to be. We're going to weld here and here. We're also now, while it's in this position, we're going to weld here and here. Because again, you know, weld here is going to want to try to pull this in. You weld here is going to try to pull this in, and it's going to keep it square. So make sure to weld here and here, and then we're going to flip around and we're going to do the same thing. All right, so we welded on these edges. So we welded the top edges and on the inside edges. Well, why didn't we weld? right here right away. Well, what's going to happen is if you weld, if you have it just tacked here and here and you start welding here, what's going to happen is this bar is going to twist in relation to this bar. So what's going to happen is we're going to have a little bit of a kind of this guy being all twisted up and that guy being all twisted up. We don't want that, right? We want this to be nice and flat, nice and flush, nice and every way we want it to be. So we wait till we do these ones once these welds are on here. Because once these welds are on here, these welds are strong enough to resist the twisting motion or the twisting force of the warp when we weld on these faces. But we're not going to do that right away because we're actually going to put crossbars here similar to what we have with this frame. But we're going to have more crossbars going across than that one. Okay, so I've measured here on both sides and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to just mat line up this bar with the mark I've made and tack it on. And I'm just using that square there to get both the top of the bar and this bar flush so that it just looks nicer, it just is more clean. And the surface of this floor isn't going to be 100%, so I'm just going to use this square to get where I want to do. So quickly, one tack here. So that's one tack there. It's going to try to pull here. So then we line up this one again with our Nice little square to get it flush at the top here. Line up the marks and tack. And that's it. I'm going to go along the whole length. Okay, now we're done tacking. Let's weld this thing up solid. So I've been using this here auto darkening helmet for everything I've been doing so far in this video, but do you need an auto darkening helmet? Well, no, not at all. I'll use uh, my passive shade here, basically not auto darkening, just one shade, kind of a little lens. I'm gonna use that for the rest of this welding. Oh, do I ever miss this thing. I'll tell you, nothing beats an old gold lens.
tell you, if you haven't used an old gold shade for welding, you're missing out. Frick, I recommend uh, this is a 9 shade, it's a little bit bright, but if you get yourself a 10 shade gold lens, I think I'm going to continue welding with this thing. So now that we've got all of the edges, the inside edges done, now we can start working on the faces. Because now it's not going to work at all. Well, it's going to work a little bit, but we're not going to be able to notice it. Still using the fixed shade. So there you have it, basic welding fitting. So I know there's a lot more tricks than that. I'm just kind of showing you how to get started from, you know, going from welding simple beads on a practice plate to building something that you might actually use. Now, if you like my video, subscribe to my channel. I got lots of cool things coming up and you don't want to miss it. Also, if you got any comments, questions, put them down below. If you got a legitimate question, I'll answer it. If you don't have a legitimate question, well, I'll put it down anyway. I don't really care what you put down there. It's the comment section. All right. Have yourselves a good day. Hope you learned something.